Hey gang, Tim here at Coral Electronics, and today we're exploring the invaluable import from and as keywords. Greetings on your next step in your Python trip. So, the import from and as keywords distinctly focus on ways to introduce new functionality to Python. For stock Python to retain its lightweight and speedy status, it allows access only for a small number of modules. Modules are simply Python files, which when accessed can allow for unique functionality. So when that extra functionality in Python is desired, it's up to the Pythonista to import the desired functions to the script or to manually create the functions by hand. So this is where the import keyword becomes invaluable. Python truly becomes a powerhouse programming language from both the module packages installed automatically and particularly from the external packages which you can install yourself. This is why the import statement is so powerful. It is the tool to access these packages. Utilizing this keyword bestows all the modules you have ever desired right to your fingertips. So to aid understanding, I'm going to explain to you exactly what files can be imported using the import keyword and also tell you exactly what those files actually are. So starting off, module. This is referring simply to a file with a .py extension. Package. This is a directory containing an underscore underscore init underscore underscore .py file and normally a bunch of other modules. This underscore underscore init underscore underscore .py files are required to make Python treat directories containing the file as a package. Built-in modules. This is a module that is natively installed within Python as soon as you download it. Object. This is anything inside a module or package that can be referenced to. These could be a class, a function, or even a variable. Importing modules is a critical skill when learning and using Python. Of all other keywords in this tutorial, import is the most important. So to make use of the function within a module inside your script, you will need to import that module with an import statement. Now, to use import in code, all import statements are made up of the import keyword along with the name of the module. In most Python scripts, import statements are declared at the top of the code under any general comments. This is done to ensure they're executed from the get-go. So, let's jump into the computer. You can see code written inside the Python programming window. It starts by importing several specific modules using import statements. These are random, math, and time. And you can see this is done at the very beginning of the code underneath the initial comments. So these give new functionality to this particular code. And this new functionality can be seen down here. We have random integer, we have pi, and we have gm time, which is the local time. So you'll notice that the syntax using this method, it will require you to show the module that it came from, have a dot, and then use the function that you desire. So random integer, in this case, will give you a random number between zero and 15. This will give pi to a, a very high precision, and this gives the day and the time. So if I run this right now, you can see just that. It's given us 42, a random integer between zero and 50. It's given us 3.14 such and such and such to give pi. It has also given us the year, the month date, the day date, the hour date, a whole bunch of things. So while the import command is very straightforward, it lacks efficiency. In many scenarios, you may only need a small portion of a particular module. So to solve this, the from keyword is born. It's a very similar code example to befores. The code demonstrates the syntax when using the from keyword. As you can see, the keyword is used in conjunction with an import statement. And this is how this keyword is always used. The other thing worth noting, when calling the new function, you can refer to the function directly by name rather than using that period notation seen before. This can be seen down here. Going through the code quickly, from date time, import date time, from random import random range, from math import SQRT, which is the square root. So print random range 
between 50, no longer we need to say zero and 50. Print the square root of four and print datetime.now. So you can see datetime has an extra folder full of little functions and functionality inside it as well. And that's how we can access that. So when we run this module, you'll see 11, which is the random range, zero to 50. Here is the square root of four, which is two. And here is the date and the time. It is possible to modify the names of modules and the name of the functions within Python. This is achieved using the as keyword. The desire may come up for a couple of reasons. Perhaps you've already used the same name for something else in your program, or another important module has the exact same name. Or simply, it could be a way to save yourself from writing the function out longhand, which will save yourself lots of time, particularly when you find yourself retyping the function over and over and over. So jumping into the computer, you can see a similar code as before, but the keyword as has been utilized. The code starts by importing several functions from different modules and then giving each of them a shorthand name. Then the functions inside these modules are utilized referencing that shorthand name. So when I run this code, you'll see it acts the same as before, printing out these values to the Python idle shell. So running through the code real quick, from date time, import date time as DT, that's shorthand, from random import, random range as RR, from math, import square root as S. So same as before, except now I'm using the shorthand method, print RR equals 50, print RR bracket 50, bracket, print S bracket four, and if I scroll down just a little bit, print dt dot now bracket bracket. So you can see I've shortened all of those functionalities. And that's it. Now, just for those extra curious, if you jump to the written up article on this guide and scroll down, you can see an image of all the modules installed to Python by default. This means using the keyword import followed by a space and then any name below will unlock all the functionality of that module to your specific Python script. There are so many. Definitely no need to remember all, but realize that this is a big reason why Python dominates as a programming language. Worth noting as well, the external modules for Python dwarf even this list below. A great repository is the Python package index, which can be found at this website. The tutorial on how to install packages from here will be coming up next. So until next time, stay cozy.